ECW created something that Vince always wanted. And um, I think ECW, what we did, even before I got there, really was the catalyst for the Attitude Era. And I think everybody can Absolutely. agree. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Vince, I think, can't, he can't swallow them, you know, swallow it. The brand ECW was the draw. Very seldom did you see, um, you know, they would advertise a match or two, but the attraction was ECW. We had a formula, you know, to, to, to get the crowd. I mean, we, you know, we could go here. Once you have them here, then we add another layer, then they're here. And then once you add the girls and the finishes and the, then, you know, it's like that building is unglued. And we had it down to a science. I mean, we could do that anytime. The contracts Paul had on us were so flimsy. I mean, you know, some were, I remember Paul having some contracts actually written on uh, napkins. You know, some of, I mean, it was pretty, I mean, in a court of law, some of that stuff was laughable. I, I loved my working relationship with him. Mm -hmm. I would call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, for what he did with me, uh, worked, you know. What he did with me, but what he did with me was unique. What he did with Dreamer was unique. What he did with Van Dam was unique. Sabu was unique. I was making three thousand dollars a week, um, wrestling two nights a week. Right. I made more for Vince uh, for ECW than I did for Vince. Yeah. I would go. I would go do uh, five years of ECW right now, the way we did it before, than five years of WWE right now. I can guarantee you, they hit harder. Paul would always say, don't have Van Damme and Incredible Touch because they were brewing for the big angle where I would have the title and finally drop it to Rob or Rob finally got that, the, you know, the prize. Was it a shoot? That one, I've heard stories that they were getting, put it this way, every cat fight they were starting to get into was more and more, you know, they couldn't stand each other. Right. They could not stand each other. Sabu, again, he's, he's such a, he tried to be, you know, he was taught by his uncle and he tried to be his uncle. And, uh, but deep down inside, he's not. I mean, Sabu should be a millionaire for the things he's done for this business. He helped revolutionize the way we do pro wrestling in America. And uh, for whatever reason, I mean, I can tell you some of the things, but I don't want to get into it. But I mean, he's, you know, he's broke and, it, it is, and he's older now, and it's, it's just, it breaks my heart. I went backstage throwing shit. I did the Shawn Michaels hissy fit, throwing shit at chairs and things at TV monitors and yelling at Paul, saying, fuck this, I don't need this. I'm out of here. Just trying to be Shawn. She was dating Dreamer, and uh, Dreamer was a top guy. So she had that, you know, I'm the, the first lady to Tommy Dreamer, and uh, she felt that she deserved, uh, you know, whatever uh, recognition or respect that was due to her. Did others feel that she did as well, or? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Ready to do my big brawl with uh, Dreamer. Right. And uh, I, we hear something going on at ringside, and Dreamer's like, you know, he just pretty much tells me, Great, Francine's out in the crowd fighting some chick. That's what he's telling me in the face-off. I know Rob uh, from uh, XPW and uh, Rob Black, and uh, I, I have actually just talked to him not too long ago, and he's just, uh, you know, he wants to bring back XPW, and he's just, uh, they're out of their minds. They're just people that don't belong in, in our business. I was one of the top three world champions, you know, and from a Mark's perspective, I never thought that wasn't me. I wasn't supposed to go that far, so I was very proud of it. I remember one time I, I was behind so bad, you know, that I literally went to, to Paul's house and, uh, you know, said, dude, I need my check. And he, he paid me two weeks and gave me a quarter ounce of weed. If he, if he had a $100,000 house, he, did, he owed 200000 you know, so no matter how much money we were bringing in, and we were still bringing in mm -hmm. money. Uh, it was just mismanaged from a very early start, and Paul did the best he could to hold on to it for as long as he could. 